Hello there everyone, my name is Dex Kamitan and today we are going to talk about Pearson Correlation. Now this is a two-part video. For the first part, we will define Pearson Correlation, look at its common uses, its uh, data requirements, its hypothesis, and uh, its test statistics. For part two, we will use SPSS to compute for Pearson Correlation. Now, uh, the bivariate Pearson correlation produces a sample correlation coefficient, which is expressed in R, which measures the strength and direction of linear relationships between pairs of continuous variables. Now, by extension, the Pearson correlation evaluates whether there is statistical evidence for a linear relationship among the same pairs of variables in the population. This is represented by a population correlation coefficient P or R or rho. Now, the Pearson correlation is a parametric measure and it also goes by the names Pearson correlation or Pearson product moment correlation or PPMC. Now, uh, this is uh, a commonly used measure uh, f for the following, you know, uh, it looks at correlation among pairs of variables. It can also be used for uh, looking into correlations within and between sets of variables. Now, uh, the bivariate Pearson correlation indi uh, indicates the following, whether uh, a statistical significant uh, linear relationship exists between two continuous variables and the strength of a linear relationship uh, that is how close the relationship is to being a perfectly straight line and the direction of a linear relationship. Uh, this could either in be increasing or decreasing. Now, it cannot be used to address non-linear relationships or relationships among categorical variables. If you wish to understand the relationship that involves categorical variables and or nonlinear relationships, you will need to choose another measure for that. Now, uh, uh, the Pearson correlation only reveals associations among continuous variables. It does not provide any inferences about causation, no matter how large the correlation coefficient is. I have to stress this again. It cannot provide you any inferences of causation because correlation is not causation. All right. Now, um, you must meet the following requirements in order for you to run Pearson correlation. There must be two or more continuous variables um, that is either interval or ratio, uh, in ratio level. Now, the cases that have should have values on both variables and linear relationship between the variables uh, should be present. Also, uh, you should have indicated cases or uh, the independence or there should be independence of observation, meaning there is no relationship between the values of variables between cases. This means that the values for all var for all uh, for all variables across cases are unrelated for, uh, for, for any cases. Now, uh, the value for any variable cannot influence the value of any variable for other cases. Uh, so this means that no case can influence another case on any variables. Now, uh, Pearson correlation coefficient and uh, corresponding significance tests are not robust when independence is violated. Now, by by variation should, uh, should, should, should uh, focus or, or obey normality. Each pair of variable is by variately normal. Uh, this means that this, uh, uh, it should be normally distributed at all levels of the other variables. This assumption ensures that uh, the variables are linearly um, related. Violation of this assumption may indicate that nonlinear relationship among variables exists. So, uh, linearity can be assessed visually using a scatter plot of the data. We will look uh, at that later. So, random sample of data from the population 
and there should be no at outlier meaning there should uh, there should be no observation that lies an abnormal distance from other values in a random sample from a population all right now uh, the null hypothesis or expressed in HO and the alternative hypothesis that is H1 of the significance test for correlation can be expressed in the following ways depending on whether one-tailed or two-tailed uh, test is, is requested. So for two-tailed test, the null hypothesis is P is equal to zero or the population correlation coefficient is uh, zero meaning there is no association between your variables now the alternate hypothesis is p is not equal to zero meaning the population correlation coefficient is not zero and a non-zero correlation could exist so for one tailed significance test uh, you have uh, the null hypothesis as uh, p is equal to zero meaning the population correlation is zero and that there is no association now uh, you can have two uh, alternate hypotheses for this the first is p is greater than zero meaning the population correlation coefficient is greater than zero and a positive correlation could exist or you can also have uh, p is equal uh, p is less than zero the population correlation is less than zero and a negative correlation could exist so the sample correlation coefficient between two variables that is x and y is denoted r or r um, x y and can be computed as uh, the following so uh, uh, on the slide, you can see the formula for Pearson correlation where uh, COV, uh, X and Y, is the sample covariance of X and Y and VAR X is the sample variance of X and VAR Y is the sample variance of Y. Now, correlation can take on any values in the range negative 1 to 1 the sign of the correlation coefficient indicates the direction of uh, the relationship while the magnitude of the correlation or how close it is to negative one or positive one indicates the strong uh, the strength of the relationship so that if you have a uh, negative one then you have a perfectly negative linear relationships but linear relationship between your variables if you get to have uh, a correlational co a correlation coefficient of zero this means that there is no relationship between your variables and if you have um, a correlation coefficient of positive one then there is perfectly positive uh, linear relationship between your variables now the strength can be assessed by these general guidelines which may vary from discipline to discipline but generally it goes like this if you have a coefficient of 1 and above to point, uh, point 0.1 and above to point 0.3 then you have a small or weak correlation any uh, coefficient above 3 and uh, uh, above 3 and uh, any correlation coefficient uh, bit uh, above 0.3 and between 0.5 then you get to have a medium or moderate correlation and any correlation coefficient above 5 then you get to have a large or strong correlation now the direction and strength of a correlation are two distinct properties the scatter plots here show uh, correlations that are r is equal to uh, positive 0.9 r is equal to 0 0.00 and r is equal to negative 0 0.90 uh, respectively now the strength of the non-zero correlations are the same 0 0.90 but the direction of the correlation is different a negative correlation corresponds to a decreasing relationship while a positive correlation corresponds to an increasing relationship 
Note that uh, the R is equal to 0.00, .00 correlation has no discernible increasing or decreasing linear pattern. Now, in this particular graph, however, uh, uh, in this particular graph, however, keep in mind that Pearson correlation is only capable of detecting linear associations. So, it is possible to have a pair of variables with a strong nonlinear relationship and a small Pearson correlation coefficient. It's a good practice to create scatter plots of your variables to corroborate your correlation coefficient. Now that we have discussed the basics of and how to interpret Pearson correlation, let us now head over to SPSS to see how it is, how it is computed. Perhaps you would like to test whether there, there is a statistical significant linear relationship between uh, the state of flow and online learning self-efficacy. You can use bivariate Pearson correlation to test uh, the relationship between these um, variables and to determine the strength and direction of the association. To run uh, the test, just click on Analyze, go to Correlate, and select Bivariate. All right. So, um, select the variables State of Flow and Online Learning Self-Efficacy. Um, and move them to the variables box. In the correlation coefficient um, section, select Pearson. In the test of significance, uh, you, can, you can either select two-tailed or one-tailed. For this example, we are going to use two-tailed. And check on uh, the box that says flag significant uh, correlations. And then uh, press OK. So the important cells... Uh, we want to look at are either cells B or C, given that this is cell A, this is cell B, this is cell C, and this is cell D. So, uh, uh, cells B and C are, uh, well, cells B and C contain the correlation coefficient for the correlation between uh, the state of flow and online learning self-efficacy. It also contains its p-value and the number of complete pairwise observation that the calculation was based on. So the correlation in the main diagonal cells, that is cells A and D, are all equal to 1. This is because a variable is always perfectly correlated with itself. If you have opted to flag significant correlations, SPSS will mark a 0 0.5, 0 0.05 significance level with one asterisk. And as in this example, a 0 0.01 significance level with two asterisks. In cells B and repeated in cell C, we can see that the Pearson correlation coefficient for flow and online learning self-efficacy is 0 0.450, which is significant based on 92 completed observations. So, based on the results, we can state the following. The state of flow and online learning self-efficacy have a statistically significant linear relationship. The direction of the relationship is positive, meaning that these variables tend to increase together that is, greater flow is associated with greater online learning self-efficacy. However, you cannot assume that uh, an increase in the state of flow leads to the increase um, in online learning self-efficacy. That is because correlation is not causation and Pearson correlation cannot provide you any inferences about um, causation. Lastly, the magnitude or strength of the association is approximately moderate because 0 0.450 is between 0.3 and 0.5. That is all for our uh, discussion in the use of SPSS for computing correlations. Thank you for listening and have a great day.